Hi students, hello. Hi everyone, welcome to Unacademy Neat English. I am your biology educator Ambika Sharma. So once again, welcome to the session. Welcome to the session and why good night? Why, why, why? Good night. Huh? What happened? Bache, now you just have six months for your NEET examination. Okay, so now you have to work hard if you really want to get good marks in your NEET examination. And today, I'm sorry for keeping the session late, but you know that we already uh, had one uh, session on the Unacademy platform where we have practiced the last 10 years questions of the molecular basis of inheritance. So quickly tell me, quickly tell me, you participated there or not? You participated in that session or not? Srinu, Priyanka, yes? So, Trisha, you were not there in that special class. Why is it so? Why is it so? So, that special class was amazing, right? I have seen students, they, they were participating, they were asking the doubts as well. And you have another special class on Monday where we will be discussing the previous year, last 10 years questions of your this chapter, your biotechnology principles and processes, okay? Right, that's what we are going to start. So, if you don't know how to get, how to enroll in that, uh, uh, special class so you just need to go to this unacademy platform download the app right and simply you can type my name right you will you can get my you will get my profile and you have to subscribe that profile okay what you have to do you just need to subscribe that profile and here you will find that free classes you all can see here right so we are done with this session and now this is our next session this is our next session and that is on 6th of November. So I want you people to be there in this particular session and this is the coupon code that you have to use for joining it. Right? And these classes are free of cost. Just participate there. Okay? Just participate there. One thing. And moreover students see. Okay? Just a minute. Okay. So see this. So if you want to join any of the batch. This is the link, right? If you want to buy the plus subscription for 24 minutes, for 24 months, see, you can save 59%, right? For 15 months, you can save 42%. Only limited seats are there and this is the coupon code that you have to use and after using this coupon code, you will get the lightning deal. Clear? You are going to get the lightning deal. Done, bache? Done. So, Sejal is asking for the timing of the special class. So, bache, just subscribe to my profile and you will get the details. Okay. So, now let's go. Let's talk about the chapter. Let's finish this chapter, Biotechnology, Principles and Processes. And I hope you know about our Avengers 3.0 batch as well. So, by using the same coupon code that is Ambika10, you can be, you can be the part of this batch. Okay. And do enroll yourself in Super 30 test series. It is again free of cost. Right, bache, but the level of questions it is going to be very good, so you will get an idea of the competition. Okay, okay, so do join this test series as well. So, in the last class, bache, we talked about the yes, we discussed about the vectors. Do you remember that? What we discussed in the last class, we discussed about the vectors in the last class. So, let's yes, let's revise it. So, firstly, we are going to start the start we are going to start with the revision so in the last class what we discussed we talked about the vectors right and about the features that vectors should have isn't it so when you talk about the vectors vectors are the weaker dna they are the gene taxi right vectors are the weaker dna they are the gene taxi ma'am what chapter after biotechnology after biotechnology principles and processes nandini we'll be starting biotechnology applications and we will start it on monday itself okay so don't you people worry everything will be in a in a proper flow and again on the unacademy platform i am going to start the theoretical sessions on molecular basis of inheritance so you will get that double benefit okay you are going to get the double benefit so now focus here so we were talking about the vectors in the last class and you know that these vectors are very important so when you talk about the features so they should have the origin of replication site isn't it what they should have they should have origin of replication site and moreover selectable markers okay they should have a gene which will give a special property to the uh, 
vector so that on the basis of that we can differentiate transformant from non transformant okay so that we can differentiate a transformant from non transformant so that's what you need to understand and the third thing that we need to remember is the cloning site that is also known as the restriction site or the recognition site so it is actually the site that will be recognized by the recognized by the restriction endonucleases and students in the last class i explained these terms to you that is insertional inactivation remember insertional inactivation okay so i gave you the example of the of the lac z gene as well so can you tell me the name of the enzyme formed by the lac z gene right can you just tell me the name of the enzyme formed by the lac z gene yes quick chandana nandini is there any issue with the voice is there any issue with the voice so if it is manageable please manage for this particular session for the next session i'll ask my team to check my system if there will be any problem i will rectify it okay yes so you are right that lac uh, this lac z gene will give you beta galactosidase right beta galactosidase and you know that this enzyme acts on a chromogenic substrate right and because of that if this enzyme is present we are going to get the blue colored colonies of the bacteria right so now the next topic that we need to start is the types of the vectors right various examples rather what we need to start we need to start the examples of the vector and the very famous example is your plasmid which is the extra chromosomal dna okay bachche so maximum size okay maximum size that can be used uh, that plasmid can bear for cloning is 15 kb okay it is the maximum size right i have already used the microphone if there is any issue with the voice but the voice is very low mm. one second now how is it now yes priyanka is it okay is it okay hello no issues okay so when you talk about the plasmid plasmid can have 15 kb dna for the cloning clear bachche for the cloning that's what you need to remember okay so you know what plasmid is you know what plasmid is it is the extra chromosomal dna which can replicate okay right which can replicate okay independently you know about it and plasmid and bacteriophages they are the most common type of the vectors so when in this plasmid a foreign gene is inserted okay when in this plasmid a foreign gene is inserted you will call this plasmid as recombinant plasmid what are you going to call it you are going to call it as recombinant plasmid or also known as hybrid plasmid fine bachche if any plasmid is having the foreign gene we'll be calling it as the recombinant plasmid and the hybrid plasmid okay bachche and the hybrid plasmid so we have various example one example is of pbr322 that we discussed in the last class and i hope you remember the diagram of pbr322 because it is very important so answer one question of mine and quickly hit the like button students quickly hit the like button if we have any new student here please subscribe to this ch uh, channel quickly subscribe to this channel let's make it a 100k subscriber family okay let's make it a 100k subscriber family so it's pbr322 this is one of the examples of the plasmids that will be used in the genetic engineering is that clear is that clear understood sure so next category is of the viruses as well 
right next category is of the viruses as well so when you talk about the viruses your bacteriophages are used as the vectors the students okay your uh, your bacteriophages are used as the vectors you have the example of the lambda phage do you know about these examples examples are important so you have the example of the lambda phage and moreover you have the example of m13 bacteriophage okay you have the example of m13 bacteriophage so what is a bacteriophage bacteriophage is a virus right it's a dna virus what is it it's a dna virus and bachche it is going to infect the bacteria right it is a virus which is going to infect the bacteria what is subhashini what is a bacteriophage it is a virus which is going to infect the bacteria that's what you people need to remember and one more thing i will relate here you know that when we use yes when we use bacteriophage to transfer the dna okay when we use bacteriophage to transfer the dna we use the word transduction remember this we use the word transduction so transduction means to transfer the genetic material from one bacterium to another with the help of virus clear bache with the help of virus clear bache clear bache is that clear so when you talk about the lambda bacteriophage that can insert the gene having the size in between 9 to 23 kb okay when you talk about lambda bacteriophage okay so that can insert the gene having size this so i told you in the last class as well that uh, which ve uh, which vector we are going to use it depends upon our requirement if you want to make the copy of a gene which is having more base pairs right the gene having uh, the bigger size in that case accordingly you are going to select the vector so you will also see the copy number you will also see the size okay you will also see the copy number you will also see what you are also going to see the size as well then bache you are also going to see what you are also going to see the size as well isn't it isn't it like if i talk about the bac bacterial artificial chromosome so in that case because they can right they can clone a gene having larger size this bac and yac as well right this bac and yac as well like here it will be 50 to 300 kb and here it will be 1000 to 2500 kb right so so that right so so that will be right the insert size of the gene the insert size of the gene will be this in the case of bacterial artificial chromosome as well in the case of yeast artificial chromosome as well so that's why they both are used in hgp that is your human genome project what is hgp this is your human genome project understood understood so 50 to 300 kb it is the size of the insert it is the size of the dn clear it is the size of the insert it is the size of the dna fine 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 right so bachche one more virus that acts like a vector is your retrovirus what is it it is your retrovirus so you know na what is the meaning of a retrovirus so when you are talking about a retrovirus you know that it is the virus having rna as its genetic material it is the virus having rna as genetic material what is it it is the virus having rna as its genetic material are you getting my point are you getting my point so basically in that case what is going to happen the example is given in ncert as well let's say you have a retrovirus okay you have a retrovirus you know that such viruses they also spread the infection isn't it their their uh, genetic material their rna is infectious it can spread the infection so basically in general if i talk about the viruses right nageshwara if i talk about the viruses in general if i talk about the viruses you know that these retroviruses they can transform a normal cell they can transform a normal cell into the cancerous one they also have that property yes or no they can transfer a normal cell into the cancerous cell yes or no this is the property of a virus this is the property of the viral genome we know it very well right we know it very well so basically this virus is having right this virus is having the property 
right this virus is having the property that it can insert its genetic material okay that it can insert its genetic material into a normal cell and that normal cell will be transformed into the cancerous one right into the abnormal one so scientists they are going to use this property of the retrovirus they are going to use this natural capability of the retrovirus so what will they do they will disarm the harmful dna here, harmful genetic material here the retrovirus it is having the harmful genetic material so that harmful genetic material will be replaced by our desired gene of interest okay it will be replaced by our desired gene of interest and then the this retrovirus will be used as a vector is that clear that retrovirus will be used as a vector is that clear sure bache sure so bacteriophage and plasmids they are very commonly used vectors what are they they are very commonly used vectors understood understood so you have another another vectors also and you will tell me about that vectors right i want to see the answers in the chat sections like one is your phase mid another is your cause mid right they are kind of hybrid vectors right so that's your homework you are going to tell me about it in the comment section fine in the comment section you will let me know about it okay that what is the meaning of the phase mid what is the meaning of the cosmid sure done bache done so that is your homework fine that is your homework so one another term is there that is known as shuttle vectors what is the meaning of a shuttle vector yeah what are the shuttle vectors anyone here in the class what do you understand by shuttle vectors and quickly hit the like button if you are new to this channel subscribe the channel and like the video and share the video link with others as well so quickly tell me what do you understand by the word shuttle vectors what do you understand by the word shuttle vectors so bachche shuttle vectors are those they are those vectors that are used for prokaryotes as well as for eukaryotes so you can use these vectors for the prokaryotic cell as well and for the eukaryotic cell as well for the prokaryotes as well as for the eukaryotes so when you talk about the example here students so you have the example of ti plasmid what is this ti plasmid it is your tumor inducing plasmid what is this it is your tumor inducing plasmid okay okay so we will discuss about it as well so shuttle vectors are those which can be used in both the cases in the case of prokaryotes as well as in the case of, in, in the case of eukaryotes as well okay in the case of eukaryotes as well so i'll give you the example here just look at this okay so this is the next part that we need to start right this is the next part that we need to start that vectors for cloning genes in plants as well as in animals so now you know about the features of the vectors you know about the examples of the vectors and now specifically the vectors that are used in genes uh, that are used in plants and animals that's what we have to discuss now sure that's what we have to discuss and then bachche we will talk about the gel electrophoresis and about the methods of transferring dna and uh, you know the other parts okay other parts so up to this part if there is any doubt do let me know quick if there is any doubt related to this do let me know quick do you have any doubt do you have any doubt sure sure okay okay so they are saying that vectors that are used for cloning in plants and animals so see uh so basically we have to transfer the genes into the plants and animals just wait okay so see this 
so they are saying that uh, transferring genes into plants and animals from bacteria and viruses which have known this for ages so how to deliver genes to transform eukaryotic cell and force them to do what the bacteria or viruses want how is it possible see there is one example they have given the example of this particular bacteria so let me explain this part so but you have one bacteria that is known as agrobacterium tumefaciens what is the name of the bacteria it is agrobacterium tumefaciens but we will even discuss it in biotechnology applications means in the next chapter also we will cover this portion okay so agrobacterium tumefaciens this is the bacteria that we have and this bacteria is also known as natural engineer what is it it's a natural engineer actually but this bacteria it used to infect the dicot plants okay it used to infect the dicot plants and it used to cause tumor right it used to cause tumor in the dicot plants fine we are talking about what we are talking about the agrobacterium tumefaciens and i am telling you that this agrobacterium tumefaciens it attacks the dicot plants right bachche and it used to cause the tumor in the dicot plants right in the root right in the root nodules of uh, that uh, dicot plants basically right right so it infects what it is a pathogen of dicot plants and it used to cause the tumor in the dicot plants how is it possible this agrobacterium tumefaciens this agrobacterium tumefaciens is having its plasmid okay it is having its plasmid now when you talk about this plasmid now in this plasmid there is a t dna what is there in this plasmid there is a t dna and this plasmid is known as ti plasmid what is the meaning of ti plasmid students i told you na it's a shuttle vector so ti plasmid means it's a tumor inducing plasmid what is the meaning of ti plasmid it means it is a tumor inducing plasmid actually this plasmid is having a segment of dna known as t dna so this dna causes the tumor what is going to happen bachche this bacteria it's a soil born bacteria what type of bacteria it is it's a soil born bacteria okay it's a soil born bacteria let's say you have this dicot plant fine imagine you have this you have this dicot plant now this bacterium it will come in the contact of this plant of course so this bacterium from its ti plasmid it will pass its t dna to the normal cell of the plant right right what that what that bacteria will do what that bacteria will do this bacteria is having the ti plasmid that ti plasmid is having the t dna so this bacteria will pass its t dna to the normal cell here okay to the it will pass its it will integrate its t dna to the normal cell of the plant cell here and that plant cell will be converted to what that plant cell will be converted to the the normal plant cell will be converted to the tumorous cell okay it will be converted to the tumorous cell that's how this agrobacterium tumefaciens works okay that's how this agrobacterium tumefaciens work now scientists when they studied the natural property of this agrobacterium tumefaciens they 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 found one thing right that here in this t dna here in the segment here in the segment of this t dna they found some restriction sites as well what is the meaning of restriction sites restriction sites cloning sites recognition sites it's all same restriction sites recognition sites cloning sites it's all what it's all same are you getting it it's all what it's all same so cloning site restriction site recognition sites it's all same first point now the t dna here in the segment of this t dna also certain recognition sites are there so now if we will use that restriction endonucleases and if we will make the cut here obviously the t dna will be inactivated the tumor causing dna will be inactivated yes or no yes or no thresha the tumor causing dna will be inactivated of course it will be right of course it will be right 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 this is the example of the insertional inactivation again na 
it is the example of the insertional inactivation so when we will we will use that restriction site that will make the cut here and we will insert our desired gene here what will we do we will insert our desired gene here and obviously when we will insert our desired gene here students then bacteria is naturally having this capability to pass this dna into the plant okay so bacteria will behave like this but now it is not passing the tumor causing dna instead of that it is passing our desired dna desired gene okay so that's how we exploit the natural capabilities of the organisms as well so see this is what given here so agrobacterium tumefaciens it is a pathogen of dicot plants bache and it is able to deliver a piece of dna the tdna to transfer normal plant cell into the tumor cell okay into the tumor cell clear bache so similarly so this example is clear this example is clear and next example is of retroviruses i already told you about the retroviruses so retroviruses in animals they also have the capability to transfer normal cells into the cancerous one okay because these retroviruses they have the art of delivering genes clear bache in their eukaryotic hosts okay okay so what will we do we instead of that harmful genes we will insert our desired genes these pathogens will be disarmed and they will work in the way we want right so see this is given here right so they have generated knowledge to transfer these tools of pathogen into useful vectors by delivering genes of interest to the humans okay so ti plasmid has now been modified into a cloning vector which is no more pathogenic to the plants but still its mechanism is used to deliver the genes of our interest into the plants so that's how they are used this example clear yes bachcho that's how they are used so this particular example clear this particular example clear sure sure yes or no sure okay so the next point next thing that we need to discuss here is this i know you want to know about the competent host first but firstly let's discuss these points bachche then everything every topic will be easy right then everything will be easy for you so now what will we start we will start the process of our dna technology you know about the tools we still need to talk about the gel electrophoresis we need to talk about the competent host even we need to talk about the methods hai na priyanka that's what we need to discuss now 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 we will discuss all that points okay so let's start with the process of our dna technology all right let's start with what let's start with the process of our dna technology or you can say that the steps of our dna technology okay what we need to start we need to start the process of our dna technology and it is also known as the steps of our dna technology clear bachche so the very first step is what the very first step is the isolation of dna yes or no the very first step is what it is the isolation of dna yes or no it is the isolation of dna yes or no yes or no then next step is the fragmentation next step is what next step is the fragmentation of dna by restriction endonucleases next step is the fragmentation of dna by restriction endonucleases clear bachche then isolation of desired dna fragment then isolation of desired dna fragment what is there the isolation of desired dna fragment so the first point here is the isolation of dna then fragmentation of dna by restriction into nucleases then isolation of desired dna fragment right isolation of desired dna fragment then ligation means joining write down the points bachche then everything will be clear then ligation of the dna fragment into vector ligation means joining of dna fragment into vector clear bachche the first point is you have to isolate the dna now you know the enzymes you know firstly we need the cleaving enzymes then restriction enzymes are required you know about them secondly fragmentation of dna by restriction endonucleases you know how that restriction endonucleases are going to make the cut but we have to separate see 
आइसोलेशन ऑफ डिजायर डीएनए फ्रेगमेंट इज देयर ओके हियर वी हैव टू टॉक अबाउट द जेल इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस व्हाट वी नीड टू डिस्कस हियर द जेल इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस क्लियर बच्चे सो वी विल टॉक अबाउट इट सो द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज आफ्टर दिस लाइगेशन ऑफ डीएनए फ्रेगमेंट इनटू द वेक्टर व्हाट वी नीड टू डू ट्रांसफर आर डीएनए इनटू द होस्ट ट्रांसफरिंग ऑफ RDNA, RDNA means recombinant DNA into host cell. Okay, into host cell. Yes or no? We have to transfer the recombinant DNA into the host cell. बच्चे, finally screening, screening of cells that are transformed, that are transformants. Right? We need to figure out which cells are transformants. Which cells are not transformants, and then, but say selection of transformed cell, they are culturing, right? The selection of transformed cells, they are culturing because we need them on large scale, and finally, extraction of desired product. Finally, extraction of what? Extraction of the desired product. So this. so what is it it is the what is it this is the process of our dna technology these are the steps okay these are the steps so you know the first step the isolation of dna you know how we need to isolate the dna firstly if there is a we have to use the lysing enzymes which are going to break a cell right right which are going to break the cell and then you will isolate you will get your dna after that you have to do the fragmentation of dna and how will it be done with the help of restriction endonucleases and you know that they will recognize specific palindromic sequences we have already discussed this part isn't it now bachche see restriction endonuclease will make the cut and i told you already right that we will use same restriction endonuclease we will use same restriction endonuclease okay we will use same restriction endonuclease to make the cut in the host cell as well as in the in the vector let's say that vector is a plasmid now it's very simple when we are cutting i told you in the experiments of molecular basis of inheritance it's not like that that actually you have a caesar and you are going to cut the dna of course not of course not it is not like that so what is going to happen here it's very simple you are going to mix one solution into another what will you do students you will just mix one solution into another okay you are just going to mix one solution into another that is going to happen okay that is going to happen so we will use same restriction into nucleus to make the cut in host cells dna and even in the plasmids dna now let's say your host cell it is a eukaryotic cell so it is having the linear it is having what it is having the linear dna the host cell is your the host cell is your let's say it is a eukaryotic cell so it will be having linear dna so if restriction endonuclease will make the cut here so don't you think that you people will get two fragments of dna don't you think that you will get two fragments of dna yes or no and when you talk about the plasmid plasmid is what it is the extra chromosomal circular dna what type of dna it is it's a circular dna and here in the case of the circular dna students when restriction endonuclease will make the cut here so you will get only one fragment right you will get only one fragment why because it's a circle so if you are going to cut it you will get only one fragment it's a linear dna so if you will cut it you will get two fragments of dna this part clear yes everyone this part clear yes or no this part clear sure 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 so finally finally we need to separate these fragments also right and for that we will use the gel electrophoresis what will be used it gel electrophoresis will be used so that's how i will teach you the gel electrophoresis i know in ncert it is given under that tools part and i am explaining you uh, i am explaining this topic here under the under the process part but now i think you you can relate the topic isn't it i think you can relate the topic so you know how to isolate the dna you know you need the cleaving enzymes but there are certain another important things also okay so just look at this 
okay just look at this so they are saying when it comes to the isolation of the genetic material right you know that you know that this is dna the genetic material is dna in majority of organism so if we have to cut the dna with restriction enzymes it should be in a pure form it should be free from other chemicals obviously it is making the sense yes it is making the sense if we have to cut the DNA, we have to cut the DNA with the help of restriction enzymes. The DNA needs to be in pure state. It needs to be free from other, other macromolecules as well. So now when you are talking about a cell, okay, it is not just having the DNA. The nucleus is not just having the DNA. Other proteins are also there, isn't it? Other proteins are also associated with it. Other macromolecules are also associated with it. So we have to separate our DNA from all other things. Understood? We have to separate our DNA from all other things. Understood? Understood? So see this. So since the DNA is enclosed within the membranes, firstly we have to break the cell. Right? We have to break the cell. So release DNA with other macromolecules. It is associated with the RNA, it is associated with the proteins, it is associated with the polysaccharides and also with the lipids. Yes or no? It is associated with RNA, proteins, polysaccharides and the lipids. So we need to separate it from them. So firstly when we need to break the cell, you know that lysozyme for bacteria, cellulase for plant cell, chitinase for fungus is required. Right? Chitinase for fungus is required. Okay? Okay? And you know that DNA is inter wind with the proteins like histones so if you have to so one thing is you have to break the outer covering you have to break the cell wall second thing is you have to remove the dna from other macromolecules so when it is rna you want to remove the rna you can use rnas right ribonucleases it will digest the rna right it will digest the rna yes or no where proteins can be removed by the treatment with the proteins. Like let's say here in this test tube, you are having the isolated cell, right? Where all the, so all the nucleic acids, they are present. Sorry, all the macromolecules, they are present. So you will add RNAs. So if RNA is present here, that will be degraded. You will add proteases. So if proteases, protease will be added here all the proteins will be degraded right so obviously other things the lipid the polysaccharides accordingly they will also be destroyed right they will also be destroyed yes or no yes or no and finally what is going to happen remember when you are isolating the dna right you will add rnas to destroy rna but you will not add dnas what is dnas dnas is an enzyme that can that can hydrolyze DNA, that can break DNA, okay, that can break DNA, done, done, okay, so we are not allowed to add it because if DNAs will be added, it is going to degrade our DNA and we need the pure form of the DNA, right, so, so DNA finally other molecules can be removed by appropriate treatments and purified DNA ultimately precipitates out after the addition of chilled ethanol important question okay so if we need to precipitate out the dna what we need to add it is the chilled ethanol it is the chilled ethanol and after adding the chilled ethanol such fine threads of dna will be seen can you see that such fine threads of dna will be seen and now we have to collect this dna Okay, we have to collect this DNA and that is known as DNA spooling. What is it? It is DNA spooling. So, can you see the threads of DNA here? So, a glass rod will be used, right? It will be placed here in the test tube and by, you know, doing it like this. Let's say here it is a test tube and I need the that precipitates of the DNA, that fine threads of the DNA. So, what will I do students? I will use the glass rod and this is how. Right, that is how I will basically try to collect that fine threads of DNA. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Yep. Can you see that? So this can be seen as collection of fine threads in the suspension. This is known as pooling. Okay, this is known as pooling. Done. So the next step is the cutting of DNA at a specific location. Next is the cutting of DNA at a specific location. Yes or no? Students, please revert. Right, next is the cutting of DNA at a specific location, yes or no? Yes or no?
ओके सो सी रिस्ट्रिक्शन एंजाइम डाइजेशन आर परफॉर्म बाई इनक्यूबेटिंग प्योरिफाइड डी एन ए मॉलिक्यूल विद द रिस्ट्रिक्शन एंजाइम एट द ऑप्टिमल कंडीशन वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ ऑप्टिमल कंडीशन द बेस्ट कंडीशन राइट राइट ऑल दैट प्रॉपर बेस्ट टेम्परेचर कंडीशन राइट दे शुड बी प्रोवाइडेड इज इंट इट इज इंट इट येस और नो येस और नो येस और नो basically what am i saying just imagine this process that firstly you are going to break the walls of a cell then you are going to add the enzymes so that your dna will remain free from all other macromolecules once you have done it you will add chilled ethanol so that your dna can form the precipitates right you will see the fine threads in that test tube and you need to collect that fine threads and that will be done this is the dna spooling you will use a glass rod right and with that with the help of that you will collect that threads clear bachche so now you know that you have the dna and you have to make the cut right you have to make the cut and how how can we make that cuts how can we make that cuts obviously with the help of restriction endonucleases right obviously with the help of restriction endonucleases okay so for that we need to incubate that purified dna purified dna with the restriction enzymes at best conditions at the optimal conditions for that particular enzyme right and then agarose gel electrophoresis is employed to check the progression of restriction enzyme digestion so now here we will talk about the electrophoresis okay now we will discuss here the electrophoresis clear bache so can you tell me what is the meaning of electrophoresis anyone here what is the meaning of electrophoresis so bache gel electrophoresis it is electrophoresis means under the application of electricity we will separate charged particles on the basis of their size under the application of electricity the charged particles the charged particles will be separated under the application of electricity or under the influence of electricity the charged particles will be separated on the basis of right on the basis of their size this point is very important so ultimately separation is there okay ultimately separation is there ultimately separation is there okay but on the basis of the size not on the basis of charge on the basis of the size the charged things will be separated under the influence of electricity okay under the influence of electricity so you have the gel electrophoresis and you have two types of gel electrophoresis there one is page another is age okay one is page another is age when it is page page means poly acrylamide gel electrophoresis and when it is age it is agarose gel electrophoresis right so basically two types of gel electrophoresis is there two types of gel electrophoresis is there one is polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis another is agarose gel electrophoresis and now here we need to know about the agarose gel electrophoresis so what is agarose agarose is a polysaccharide obtained from the seaweed it's a polysaccharide obtained from seaweed okay so basically what will be done bachche see the agarose powder will be collected i'll show you the setup as well see that's the setup in the ncert here it is given the separation and isolation of dna fragment so see this is the setup so basically we will take that agarose powder okay and it will be dissolved in the hot water that agarose powder will be taken and it will be dissolved in the hot uh, in the hot water and we will allow it to cool okay bachche we will we will bachche nandini can't you understand it i think it's very simple like gel electrophoresis for gel electrophoresis i'm using a short form that is ge how can it be a trick here page age so these are like 
and if you are confused about page age obviously polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis if you are using the every uh, abbreviation it is forming page and then age it's very simple bachche right use common sense as well okay so when you are talking about the agarose so as i said this is a powder you will dissolve it in the hot water and you will allow it to cool and once you will allow it to cool what is going to happen right that this this is going to form kind of thick filament right certain kind of thick filaments will be formed and that filaments are going to form a kind of mesh work there right that filaments and are going to form a kind of mesh work here and here here right among these filaments can you see this pores are also there and this pore size it it depends upon the concentration of the agarose okay the pore size it depends upon the concentration of the concentration of the agarose so again i'm repeating this point agarose it is a polysaccharide obtained from the seaweed what is agarose it's a polysaccharide obtained from seaweed okay then this agarose will be dissolved in the hot water it will be allowed to cool and after that right the thick filaments will be formed right and these thick filaments they will be crossed in this way they will be crossed in this way you will see certain pores there what will you see there you will see certain pores there okay and that pore size it depends upon the concentration of the agarose that pore size it depends upon the concentration of the agarose so basically you can see the setup here right so here when you look at this setup no see it is connected to the source of electricity as well it is connected to the source of electricity as well so here you will see two ends uh oh okay so you will see two ends so now you know that we will use this to separate the dna fragment so dna is what dna is a negatively charged molecule what is dna dna is a negatively charged molecule isn't it so what is dna dna is a negatively charged molecule and why dna is negatively charged due to the presence of the phosphates okay due to the presence of what due to the presence of the phosphates clear bache clear bache right now here in this see this is the setup here you will see certain wells where we have to load our sample and that dna will pass from that agarose gel and you know that pores are there that will help in the and electricity is also applied that will help in the movement of that fragments so as i said dna is negatively charged and here in this setup we will be having two ends anode and the cathode but the anode is positively charged cathode is negatively charged always remember this do not make the mistake here okay do not make the mistake here so what i just said that there will be two ends one is the anode which is positively charged another is the cathode which is negatively charged so when you talk about the anode okay when you talk about the anode this is positively charged so bachche when electricity will be applied and the sample will be loaded this negatively charged dna it will start moving towards the positively charged anode right this negatively charged dna will start moving towards the positively charged anode are you getting it i'm repeating this again this negatively charged dna will start moving towards the positively charged anode and bachche that movement again it doesn't depend upon the charge it depends upon the size this the fragment which is smaller in size that will reach farther right let's say here you have loaded the sample here you have loaded the dna sample this is the negative end this is the positive end so under the influence of electricity of course because dna is negatively charged it will move towards the positive it will move towards the positive end that is your anode okay and then the dna fragment which is very small that will reach farther okay the dna fragment which is small that will reach farther and you will see such bands okay you will see such bands are you getting it so this is the agarose gel electrophoresis this is the agarose gel electrophoresis so here you need to take care of certain points as well the first point is when you load the dna sample here you have to stain the dna sample if you want to see that bands first thing after getting that bands we need to separate that okay we'll be using the different methods right audio uh, the auto radiography will be used so for that for that that bands the dna needs to be stained okay the dna needs to be stained clear bache 
क्लियर बच्चे सो द कटिंग ऑफ डी एन ए बाई रिस्ट्रिक्शन एंडो न्यूक्लियर इज रिजल्ट इन द फ्रेगमेंट ऑफ डी एन ए दीज फ्रेगमेंट कैन बी सेपरेटेड बाई जेल इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस सो दीज डी एन ए फ्रेगमेंट बिकॉज दे आर नेगेटिवली चार्ज दे विल बी सेपरेटेड बाई फोर्सिंग दैम टू मूव टूवर्ड्स एनॉड सो एनॉड इज पॉजिटिवली चार्ज सो अंडर द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड वी आर गोइंग टू डू दैट isn't it so now a days the most commonly used matrix is agarose which is a natural polymer extracted from the seaweeds understood which is a natural polymer extracted from the seaweed so dna fragments separate according to their size another important point right they will be separated according to their size and through the sieving effect provided by agarose gel i told you know in the agarose gel there will be the pores pore size depends upon the concentration of agarose so it's like a sieve 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 in hindi means channi right right after making the tea this is what we used to do we used to separate the tea leaves we use that sieve we use that sieve so so that's what they are talking about so smaller the fragment size the farther it moves smaller the fragment size the farther it moves so here you people can see right so this is a nod so that's why this is a nod and this is the negative end cathode so these are the wells where sample will be loaded after staining and in the case of dna the stain that will be used is ethidium bromide another famous question from this topic right the stains are the stain which is the stain which is used here is ethidium bromide another important mcq clear another important mcq yes you can also write it like this etdr excellent fine excellent so smaller the fragment farther it will move smaller the fragment farther it will move understood understood so separated dna fragments can be visualized only after staining the dna with ethidium bromide and then you have to expose these this part to the uv radiations to the uv radiations right so we cannot see the pure dna fragment in visible light and without stain remember this question can come so what type of bands we will see bright orange colored bands of dna another important mcq clear bachche it is the another important mcq fine fine so ethidium bromide will provide the bright orange colored band fine bachche because we have to expose it to the uv light done so separated bands of dna they are cut out from the agarose gel they will be extracted from that gel piece this step is known as illusion this is also another important mcq so trust me from this chapter you are going to get all the questions from the ncrt first thing secondly you will get repeated kind of questions so if you will see uh, sorry if you will solve the previous year questions now then you are not going to face any difficulty at all okay literally you are not going to face any difficulty fine fine so the separation of these fragments from the agarose gel is known as illusion illusion so dna fragments they will be purified and they are used in constructing the recombinant dna by joining them with cloning vectors so by gel electrophoresis you will even separate the plasmid fragments also and even the fragments of the desired dna and finally we have to join it clear bachche finally we have to join it understood so the gel electrophoresis is clear tell me the gel electrophoresis is clear sure so see the so dna right when we will separate the fragments the process is remo, uh, reported uh, repeated with the vector dna and you know that vector dna will give one band or one fragment and that uh, linear dna if it is a eukaryotic cell it will give two fragments okay it will give two fragments so joining of dna it also involves several processes bachche after having cut the source dna as well as the vector dna with the same restriction enzyme the gene of interest from the uh, source dna and the vector dna they are mixed and ligase is added so you know what is the role of ligase ligase is the molecular glue what is ligase this is the molecular glue what is ligase students it is the molecular glue so it will join sugar phosphate backbone what this enzyme will do it will join sugar phosphate backbone understood understood done so bachche one more step yeah there is one more step that you should understand here is 
that is your amplification of gene of interest by PCR. So the next important topic that we need to discuss is PCR. So PCR means, yes, PCR means, what is the meaning of PCR? See, today we have to finish this chapter, right? So class will go till 10.30 or 10.15. Done? Done? So, the next topic that we need to discuss is PCR. The next topic that we need to discuss is PCR. And PCR means poly, it means polymerase chain reaction. It means polymerase chain reaction. So, that's the meaning of PCR students. Okay, that is the meaning of PCR. So, when you talk about PCR, that is your polymerase chain reaction, which it is used to amplify, it is used for the amplification of gene of interest. It is used for the amplification of gene of interest. Now, what is the meaning of amplification? See, PCR can be used in different ways. Let's say your gene of interest is in very small quantity and you want its more copies, right? You want its multiple copies. So, what you people can do? What you people can do? You can use the PCR, one thing. Secondly, sometimes, let's say, you can also relate it with DNA fingerprinting. We have discussed the DNA fingerprinting in your molecular basis of inheritance. I know we have to discuss it in detail. Okay, I told you there in that chapter now that we will discuss here in uh, this uh, biotech part. So, when you are talking about the DNA fingerprinting also, you know that it is used to used to identify two different people. Okay, so, so you know its function, right? So, basically, let's say, even for DNA fingerprinting, you want a DNA sample, but you do not have the sufficient DNA and you want to amplify that DNA. You want its multiple copies. So you can use PCR, that is your polymerase chain reaction. What is this PCR? It is your polymerase chain reaction. Clear, bache? So this technique was invented by Carrie Mullis. Okay, this technique was invented by, it was invented by Carrie Mullis. Are you getting it? This is important. Please note down. So, it is invented by Carrie Mullis. Clear, bache? And it was invented by, uh, uh, okay. And uh, Carrie Mullis also got the Nobel Prize for that discovery. Okay. Right. Even in 1993, Carrie Mullis got the Nobel Prize for that discovery. So, PCR is very, very, very important. Okay. PCR is what? PCR is very, very, very important. And there is a kind of, you know, tube in which PCR will be conducted. Fine. So, in the PCR, there are three steps. I'll start with the requirements as well, but you should know about three steps. And for that three steps, there is a trick that is die. Right. For that steps, there is a trick and that trick is what? That trick is die. It is die. So, D stands for denaturation. A stands for annealing, E stands for extension, right? E stands for extension, that's what we have. So, what do we have here in PCR? In PCR, we have three things, right? The three steps are there. The first is denaturation, second is annealing, third is extension. So, it's die. That's how I remember. Okay, that's how I remember. It's die. So, ultimately here, you are going to make the multiple copies of the DNA. If you have a fragment of DNA, you can make its multiple copies. So, on the basis of that, I think you can tell me about the requirements. So, if you have to multiply a DNA, definitely you know you need the deoxyribo nucleoside triphosphates, isn't it? That's what you need. Deoxyribose nucleoside triphosphates. That's what you need. Don't you think so? Of course, you need the enzymes as well. And here, that main polymerizing enzyme is your TAC polymerase. We'll discuss about it. Okay, you, we will talk about TAC polymerase, isn't it? I'm telling you about the requirements of the PCR. What am I telling? I'm telling you about the requirements of the PCR and here I'm telling you that that's what you need for PCR, right? That's what 
you need for what you need for pcr the requirement it is right the requirement it is so obviously deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates are required so see if it is written like this nucleoside triphosphates nucleoside here it should not be nucleotide it's nucleoside triphosphates it's nucleoside triphosphates so enzymes are required ions are required like magnesium ions they are required now when we need to copy the dna okay you know what we have to do we have to right separate these two strands isn't it we need to separate these two strands let's let's recall the dna replication let's recall the dna replication so when you talk about the dna replication you know that we need to increase the temperature the two strands of the dna they need to separate right but before that in body right in in vivo how the dna replication occur do you remember do you remember that that basically there will be an enzyme that is known as helicase that helicase will start the unbinding of dna right that helicase will start the unbinding of dna and this helicase it requires the energy from atp hydrolysis right this helicase it requires the energy from atp uh, hydrolysis and this helicase will start the unbinding of the dna from where from origin of replication site right and after that if you remember because we do not want the reannealing of these single strands so you know that you know that ssbp single strand binding proteins will be required right single strand binding proteins will be required and moreover the topo isomerase right the topo isomerase is used to remove the supercoiling right the topo isomerase is used to remove the supercoiling do you remember that do you remember that and here if you remember you also need rna primer remember you also need rna primer which will be formed by the primase that will be formed by what that will be formed by the primase and then what is going to happen the strand synthesis will occur right this is what we discuss in a body in a living body and you know that when there is the synthesis of dna naturally in the body it is going to be semi continuous or semi discontinuous right no doubt it is the semi conservative mode but it is also the semi continuous or semi discontinuous right it is semi continuous or semi discontinuous do you remember like one strand one strand will be the leading strand and another strand having template 5 prime to 3 prime it will be the lagging strand remember this remember this but but now why am i telling you here before the pcr because even in pcr you have to replicate the dna but here it will be little different right here what is going to happen the way is little different so i told you there will be three steps of the pcr it's dye dye denaturation annealing and the extension denaturation annealing and the extension that are the three steps right that are the three steps so the first step is denaturation so you have to denature the dna and here how will you achieve it you will increase the temperature right so in this process when you talk about the denaturation here the temperature is very high the temperature of that tube is very high because of that the hydrogen bond between the bases will break and both the strands of dna will get separated clear bachche both the strands of dna will get separated okay so that is what denaturation is so double stranded molecule of dna will be separated and what will we get we will get two single single stranded dna so here the temperature of the setup is near about 94 degrees celsius or you can simply write it like this above 90 degrees celsius right it will be above 90 degrees celsius clear bachche clear bachche okay so the first step is denaturation and because of high temperature both the both the strands of dna will be separated second is annealing but say what is the meaning of annealing annealing means a joining right what is the meaning of annealing annealing means joining and here the temperature will be somewhere in range 40 degree celsius to 60 degree celsius the temperature will be in the range 40 degree celsius to 60 degree celsius so what is the meaning of annealing what is the meaning of annealing tell me 
what is the meaning of annealing yes annealing means joining what is the meaning of annealing students annealing means joining so the temperature here is in between the range 40 degree celsius to 60 degree celsius so you can consider somewhere in between somewhere 54 degree celsius so annealing means joining so now here in this step what will happen so now you have two separated strands of dna right you have two single strands of dna right right so here the primer will join uh oh yes so here what is going to happen bache the primer will join why why we decrease the temperature here in this step because here we want the joining we want that primer to join with the single strand we need the formation of the right we want to form the hydrogen bonds here why we want to form the hydrogen bonds here yes or no that's why the temperature is lowered so that hydrogen bonds can form so that hydrogen bonds can form and subhashini here it is not the rna primer that will be used no no naturally it is the rna primer that will form it is the primase enzyme that will form the rna primer but here the story is not like that so these are basically oligonucleotide these are oligonucleotides means these are the dna primers it is not the rna primer right here you will not see ribonucleoside phosphates no you will see deoxyribonucleosides monophosphate right you will see deoxyribose nucleoside monophosphates are you getting it and i hope you can relate it with the dna application right i told you deoxyribonucleoside right deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates will be used here right they are the raw material no so deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates right deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates clear bache so why triphosphates why triphosphate tri means three three phosphates are there na and here you know that monophosphates are there so these they these uh, triphosphates they are acting like a substrate as well okay and they will also release the energy for the polymerization they are acting like a substrate as well and they also release the energy for the polymerization are you getting it okay so here it is not the rna primer that will join but instead of that these are the dna primer or you can say that oligonucleotide primers right so this is the annealing this is the joining now the third step is dae it's di no it's di dae the third step is bache extension the third step is what it is the extension so now you have to extend this primer you have to further add the bases so that you can get the dna strand okay okay so you need to add the bases so that further you can get the dna strand so for the extension the temperature is near about 72 degree celsius okay so the temperature is what it is 72 degree celsius so here right your enzyme which enzyme will be there the tac polymerase which enzyme is used here for this step bache tac polymerase and here we also need magnesium iron right so why tac polymerase see this tac so actually this enzyme is obtained from a bacteria that is your thermus or thermophilus aquaticus right that is your thermus or thermophilus aquaticus it is an archaebacterium what is it it is an archaebacteria but this bacteria can survive under high temperature conditions are you getting my point this bacteria it can survive under high temperature conditions okay so from this bacteria we are going to extract the polymerase that is known as tac polymerase so t means thermus or thermophilus here aq means aquaticus here right aq means aquaticus here so this particular enzyme helps to synthesize the dna here and why do we use this enzyme because here the temperature the setup that has is having high temperature right the setup is having high temperature clear bache the setup is having what the setup is having high temperature and because of that other enzymes they will get degenerated but this tag polymerase can also work under the you know very high temperature conditions you can say that even if it is near about 95 degree celsius 98 degree celsius this stack polymerase can work okay the stack polymerase can work that's why this enzyme is used and this enzyme okay here in the pcr you will not find uh, the leading and lagging strand 
both the strands will be synthesized continuously. Clear? Both the strands will be synthesized continuously. Clear, bache? Clear, bache? So, so let's say after this extension, the same steps will be repeated again and again. Again, that three steps will be repeated. Again, that three steps will be repeated. Are you getting my point? Again, the same steps will be repeated and even after 30 cycles, do you know that after 30 cycles, you can get near about 1 billion copies of the DNA. Imagine. So, from a very, right, from a very small DNA, clear, but from a very small DNA, you can get multiple copies of a DNA. What will you get? You will get multiple copies of a DNA. Understood? Understood? Sure. Sure, so all three steps will be repeated and you can repeat that for 2n. So, 2n molecules are, are formed after n number of cycles. 2n molecules are formed after n number of cycles. So, that's how you can even check that after, you know, how many cycles, how many molecules of DNA are obtained. So, MCQ can come from this part. So, that is what the PCR is. That is what the polymerase chain reaction is. Clear, bache? That is what the polymerase chain reaction is. Is that clear? Sure. Sure. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Done. So, this is about the PCR. Fine. This is about the PCR. Okay. So, the next point after this so this is the amplification okay so see the steps here so you should know about the temperature right you should know about the process you should know that these are not the rna primers but instead of that they are the dna primers and after 30 cycles right near about 1 billion times right you will get this amplified dna fine bache fine so see what are they they are small <coughs> sorry chemically synthesized oligonucleotides Right, that are complementary to the regions of DNA. Done, bache? That are complementary to the regions of DNA. Sure, clear? Clear? Sure? So, see, the amplified fragment, if desired, can now be used to ligate with a vector for further cloning. Okay, for further cloning. So, you know that in that way, we will get our recombinant DNA. So, there are several methods of introducing the ligated DNA, the joined DNA into the recipient cells. Remember, we when I was te teaching you the tools, I told you that methods to deliver the DNA system, electroporation extra, uh, etc. So, this is what we need to discuss now. Okay, so recipient cells, after making them competent to receive to take up DNA present in its surrounding. So, now before it, you need to understand the meaning of the competent host. What do you need to understand? You need to understand the meaning of the competent host. It's simple, bache. By using this technology, right, by using this rDNA technology, the recombinant DNA technology, you have made a recombinant plasmid. What you have made? You have made a recombinant recombinant plasmid now which you need to insert that plasmid into the host let me complete this topic once again Re right we will summarize the steps of the biotechnology and you will answer it right you will understand it so basically what is happening that when you are talking about the recombinant plasmid we need to insert it into a host and that host needs to be competent fine that host needs to be competent now what is the meaning of a competent host competent host is the one which is having the capability the ability to take up the foreign dna just say let's say let's say right uh you are not understanding the biology or the physics or the chemistry right just say we have a student his name is avinash uh not Ab avinash it's Avanish, hana, it's Avanish. So Avanish, right, he is he is a student, right, who cannot even understand the physics, the chemistry, the biology, not even the mathematics. Right? Right. He cannot even understand any other subject as well. Neither accounts, economics, nothing. Because he is not interested in studying. Right. He attend the classes just to spam in the classes. Are you getting my point? He attend the sessions 
Pavnish attend the session just to spam in the classes. So he is not going to, so he cannot understand anything. So basically, basically, Pavnish is not competent, right? Even if I'm teaching very good, he cannot understand the biology, right? His that switch is off. Are you getting it? His that switch is off. Okay, so even if I'm understanding in a very good way, still he is not going to find it interesting. He'll find it worst. Fine, fine. He is going to find it worst. Okay, because he is not competent to understand that subject. Are you getting it? He is not competent to understand that subject. Okay, so same is the case here. So when you are saying, when you are using the word competent host, when you are using the word competent host, it means that host should have the ability, the capability to take up the foreign DNA. So if it is having the ability, then good. Otherwise, we know the ways by which we can make a host cell competent. Clear, bache? Right. By which we can make the host cell competent. Now, see, Avnish is saying that I'm an MBBS student, which is a lie. Right. And he's saying he has scored 600 plus marks, which is also a lie. Because he doesn't have that uh, basic thing, right, the etiquettes. So I don't think that he'll be a good doctor. And uh, he can be a good doctor. And, and even I don't even believe that he's an MBBS student. Hey na? Hey na? So he's not competent. That's how you have to understand it. Clear? That's how you have to understand it. So now you will not, you will never ever forget this example. Clear, Archana, Subhashini? You're never going to forget this example. Hey na? Hey na? Okay. So, focus here, everyone, focus here. So, what is the meaning of a competent host? The host that can take up the foreign DNA. Okay, the host that can take up the foreign DNA. And even if that host is not competent, right, we know the ways by which we can make the host competent so that that host will become transformant. So, come to this part. So, you know that DNA is a hydrophilic molecule. DNA is what? Nageshwara, DNA is what? It's a hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means water loving. So it is, it is lipophobic and it is hydrophilic. DNA is lipophobic and it is, it is hydrophilic molecule. So it cannot cross through the cell membrane. Okay. It cannot cross through the cell membrane because of its size, because of its nature, because it is lipophobic. Right. It is scared of that lipid. Lipophobic. Right. So it cannot cross the DNA membrane. Uh, it cannot cross the plasma membrane. So if I have to, if I want my cell to accept the DNA, so what can I do? DNA cannot cross the plasma membrane directly. So what can I do? Right. I can create certain pores there. Okay. What can I do? I can create, right. I can create certain pores there. And, right, by creating that pores, the DNA can directly enter here into the cell, right? DNA can directly enter here into the cell, right, bachi? So, this is actually electroporation where pores are created with the help of electricity. And obviously, they are temporary, right? Of course, they are what? They are temporary. Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay, so it cannot pass through the cell membrane in order to force bacteria to take up the plasmid. Bacterial cells must first be made competent. Okay, so this is done by treating them in different, different ways. So one way is electroporation also. Here you are not treating it in a different way. Here with the help of electricity, the pores can be created in the plasma membrane and the DNA, then the DNA will be taken. This is one way, right? This is one way. Are you getting it? This is one way. Another thing is the treatment. The treatment with divalent cation. The treatment with divalent cation. So divalent cation here is bache calcium or magnesium. It can be calcium. It can be magnesium. That can be calcium. That can be magnesium. Right. See calcium it is. So this calcium it will increase when we will treat our cell with this divalent cation it will increase the efficiency with which dna enters the bacterium through pores in the cell wall so these cations are going to create pores in the cell wall and the dna will enter clear bache dna will enter okay so D then after this after the treatment with divalent cation the second thing is recombinant dna right will be forced into such cells by incubating the cells with our dna on ice so the first step is treatment with divalent cation 
what is the first step archana naisha what is the first step the first step is the first step is treatment with the divalent cations and the second step is we have to incubate that treated cell with the recombinant plasmid on ice clear on ice and then bachche third step includes the heat shock right third step includes the heat shock so it is followed by placing them briefly at 42 degree celsius heat shock clear at 42 degree celsius heat shock and then again you have to put it back on the ice so see it's a torture firstly treatment with divalent cation then incubation on ice then again the heat shock at 42 degree celsius again on ice again on ice imagine imagine so obviously even if you are not competent enough if you are not reading properly that's what i can do that's what i can do hai na so in the winters if i'll ask you that sit sit on the ice and then read obviously you'll be like ma'am you please be nice i'll start reading properly hai na so that is not a treatment that is actually a torture okay that is actually a torture so this is just a way area right and the cell will be ready to accept this dna and now you know that another way is the micro injections right the another way is the micro injection what is the another way tell me quickly it is the micro injection so micro injection in micro injection what is going to happen our dna is directly injected into the nucleus of the animal cell okay if you remember bachche icsi anyone here in the class who remember icsi means intra cytoplasmic sperm injection it is intra cytoplasmic sperm injection icsi remember in assisted reproductive technology assisted reproductive technology we discuss that intra cytoplasmic sperm injection okay that is icsi intra cytoplasmic sperm injection so there is an egg there will be the, the the nucleus of the sperm will be directly injected into the egg here okay the nucleus of the sperm will be directly injected into the egg here are you getting it yes bachche are you getting it so so it is icsi intra cytoplasmic sperm injection so that is also kind of micro injection part okay that's how you can relate now bachche after that another method which is very suitable for the plants is biolistic or gene one right it is a biolistic or gene gun method so what is happening the recombinant dna right bachche it will be sorry yes there will be the bombardment with high velocity micro particles of gold or tungsten coated with dna so basically you will take the particles of the gold the tungsten and the recombinant dna will be coated over it so now with a with a kind of gun right at a very high velocity the bombardment of that molecules will start okay the bombardment of that micro particles will start so it is mainly used for the plant cell it can be used in the animal cell but mainly it is used for the plant cell right it is mainly used for the plant cell not for the animal cell but yes it can be used area for the animal cell as well so what is happening when you are bombarding right when you are bombarding that molecules at a high velocity what is going to happen the tungsten or the gold coated recombinant dna they will enter into the cell this is another way to insert the gene of interest okay this is another way to insert the gene of interest and again i already told you about the disarmed pathogen i gave you the example of bacteriophages i sorry i gave you the example of ti plasmid i gave you the example of retrovirus clear so these are the different ways by which by which the recombinant dna can be inserted into the host cell and i told you about the electroporation as well that under the influence of electricity we can create temporary holes in the cell wall and the dna can enter there clear bachche dna can enter there so these are the ways so even this topic is over right even this topic is over see and then finally you know what you have to do you know what you have to do you have to figure out which one is transformant and which one is non transformant clear which one is transformant and which one is non transformant and you know what are we going to use for it yes what are we going to use for it selectable markers right of course we need selectable markers for it then clear bachche what do we need we need the selectable markers for it 
ओके ओके डन सो सी इफ रिकॉम्बिनेंट डीएनए बेयरिंग जीन फॉर द रेजिस्टेंस टू एंटीबायोटिक इज ट्रांसफर टू इकोलाय आई होप यू रिमेंबर द नेम देयर राइट द कैनामाइसिन टेट्रासाइक्लिन क्लोरम फिनिकोल राइट आई होप यू रिमेंबर दैट सो इन दैट वे यू कैन चेक ट्रांसफॉर्मेंट फ्रॉम नॉन ट्रांसफॉर्मेंट सो ऑलरेडी आई एक्सप्लेन यू द टॉपिक ऑफ द सेलेक्टेबल मार्कर्स क्लियर बच्चे देन फाइनली नाउ यू हैव अ सेल दैट इज हैविंग योर रिकॉम्बिनेंट प्लाज्मिड और आर डीएनए obviously now you know the flow of information that dna will form mrna mrna will form the protein and this recombinant protein is your demand this is what you need okay why are we doing such a such an expensive process why because we need this protein we need this recombinant protein and obviously we need it basically on a large scale so if i want this protein in a lab okay on small scale then i can grow the culture of that host in a flask but i want it right i want it at a i want it on a large scale so what are we going to use bache we will be using the bio reactors right so in the industries we have the large flasks having curved bases they are known as bio reactors what are they they are known as bio reactors yes students what are they they are known as bio reactors so in these bio reactors right the nutrient medium or the culture medium will be added and here that cell having our recombinant dna right the cell having our recombinant dna right that will be grown here right bachche and then we will get our product so the bio reactors will be used clear bachche what will be used bio reactors will be used so if we want to grow that on a large scale we need bio reactors let's say you need to make the that recombinant protein as a is a is a kind of drug it's a medicine so obviously that's how we need isn't it that's how we need so see it is simple so when you insert a piece of alien dna into a cloning vector and transfer it into a bacteria plant or cell the alien dna will multiply here obviously it will multiply here right it will And so ultimately its work is to give us the desirable protein and that's what we need right bachche that's what we need so after having cloned the gene of interest and having optimized the condition to induce the expression of that protein right right one has to consider producing it on large scale so this recombinant protein we need on large scale bachche right so we will prepare the culture continuous culture okay there can be the batch culture there can be the continuous culture now what is the meaning of this see batches batches wise i am doing something batches wise i am doing something i'll give you one example let's say i'll start my biology classes and uh, i have decided that first i will take 30 students right i will complete their syllabus when one batch will be over then i will take another 30 students i am going to teach them then when, when this batch is over i will take another 30 students that is that is how the batch batch culture works like this is a bio reactor you are putting all the nutrients all the essential nutrients here you have maintained the optimum conditions there and and you are growing your cells here right so you have added the certain amount of the nutrient medium so all that cells when they divide okay exponentially after a time you know how that growth work initially lag phase then log then stationary lag phase log sorry lag phase log phase also known as exponential phase and finally the stationary phase is there okay so you have added the nutrient medium just once the cells will use it they will divide it they will multiply it they will give you the recombinant protein once the nutrient medium is finished obviously they don't have food to eat they will not do their work it all will stop it's all will stop so that's how you will get the batches batch culture right right that these cells they will divide you will get your protein that's all so after clearing it you will put another batch you will put another batch now the word is continuous culture like see here continuously you are adding the essential things you are adding the nutrient medium continuously your cells are dividing here they have attained that exponential phase because they are getting unlimited supply of the nutrient and from one side you are obtaining your product so it's a kind of continuous culture let's say in my classes there is 
there there is an entry for the students after every week after every week you can join my classes in one week i'm finishing one chapter so if you have missed that chapter and you want to join my classes you can join my next right you can join my classes from the next week right so it is not batch wise it is kind of continuous right it's a kind of continuous culture okay so the continuous culture is the better one okay the continuous culture is the better one see cells can also be multiplied in a continuous culture system wherein the used medium is drained out from one side fresh medium is added from other to maintain the cells in their physiologically most active or the exponential phase because they are ultimately right they are getting uninterrupted supply of nutrient medium so cells they will keep on dividing they will give us they will keep showing the expression of that gene they will give us recombinant protein so continuous culture is better than the batch culture okay the continuous culture is better than the batch culture fine the continuous culture it is better than the batch culture so small so this type of culturing method produces a large biomass leading to higher yields of the desired protein important it is right so for small volume culture right bache cannot yield appreciable quantities of product so produce it in large quantities we need the bioreactors so bioreactors they are the vessels in which raw materials are biologically converted into specific products done bache so bioreactor is going to provide the optimal conditions for achieving that desired product okay the proper growth conditions will be provided so we have two types of bioreactors so the diagram is also very important okay so here even the diagram okay even the diagram here is also very important understood understood the diagram here is also very important clear bachche so this is your simple stirred tank bioreactor this is the sparsed stirred tank bioreactor okay so these are the common type of bioreactor so see here in this bioreactor you have the form breaker breaker you have the flat bladed impeller cultural broth is there steam for sterilization sterilization is important contamination should not be there at all okay contamination should not be there at all so acid base for ph control so basically in these bioreactors proper suitable or you can say that optimum conditions are provided okay optimum conditions are provided clear bache so these stirrer they will help to you know distribute the things uniformly now when you look at this past stirred tank bioreactors you can see the gas entrainment here can you see these bubbles so bubbles they increase the oxygen transfer area these bubbles they increase what they increase the oxygen transfer area can you see these bubbles they increase the oxygen transfer area and see increased the surface area for oxygen transfer right bache so basically that stirrer will help to distribute the things uniformly the oxygen and even the nutrients fine fine so that's what you can see so stirred tank reactor is a cylindrical with a curved base which facilitate the mixing of reactor contents the stirrer facilitates even even mixing and oxygen availability throughout the bioreactors okay so alternatively even air so proper aeration system is also there na so air can be bubbled through the reactor so if you look at that diagram closely you will see bioreactor has an agitator system okay so the air will also be added oxygen delivery system is there a form control system is there temperature control and ph control system is there and there is a sampling port from where we can get our recombinant product and then bache we can check its quality that comes under the downstream processing right that will come under what that will come under the downstream processing got it got it clear bache clear bache so after completion of this biosynthetic stage the product has to be subjected through a series of processes so now you got a product let's say if it is a if it is a drug you need to check its efficacy right it has to go for the clinical trials okay even if you are getting that recombinant protein that is not sure that you are getting that protein only in the culture medium of course not you have to extract that protein right you have to check its efficacy you have to maintain its purity so all that things right all that things comes under the downstream processing fine bachche so these are the series of processes right where it's it will be extracted it will become ready for the marketing as the finished product fine so here it includes the separation and the purification 
which are referred to as the downstream processing so important is this so it is the final process and you will finally get your product which will be marketed fine bache which will be marketed that's what the downstream processing is so product will is formulated with suitable preservative to maintain the quality such formulation has to undergo through clinical trial if it is a drug so strict quality control is required if you want that product for a longer period clear bache for maintaining its better quality so this is all about the biotechnology so as i promised in the starting that in three lectures we will finish it now we have another chapters of biotech another chapter from this unit right we will finish it in two lectures okay we are going to finish that chapter in two lectures but i am trying to send the pdf in your group but i don't know what is the issue uh, today again i will try right so i'll figure out and then i will send you that okay i will send you that so you know what you have to do be regular be consistent attend the classes and this is the coupon code that you can use and you can be the part of my classes right so you can use this coupon code across the anacademy platform any course that you want to buy you will get the better deal okay for that and moreover students moreover you know what you have to do just subscribe to my profile okay so subscribe to my profile on anacademy and do attend the question practice session on the biotechnology so i'll be taking the session on 6th of november okay so on 6th of november there will be the practice session and we will solve last 10 years pyqs clear bachche last 10 years pyqs and we have already solved this today molecular basis of inheritance fine fine so see you all soon take care thank you so much for watching and i'll be waiting for the, your comments so do let me know in the comment section you like the session or not and yes you remember your homework you have to tell me about the phase med and the cosmet okay you have to tell me about the phase med and the cosmet so let's meet you on monday so till then take care bye bye happy sunday thank